All right, let's jump into another deep dive. This time, we're looking into the legal situation surrounding rapper Lil Durk. Oh yeah, things are heating up for him. <laughs> Definitely seems that way. We've got this insightful video analysis from Bruce Rivers to guide us, a board-certified criminal defense lawyer. He's reacting to all the news coverage. It's a lot to unpack, honestly. Yeah, it's a lot of legal jargon. Exactly. So we're going to break it down, figure out what these charges really mean, and try to get a sense of just how much trouble Lil Dirk might actually be in. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit more serious than a parking ticket this time around. Just a tad, I'd say. So first things first, for anyone who might not know, who is Lil Dirk? What's he all about? So Lil Dirk is a Grammy-winning rapper, really big in the drill music scene, known for, well, let's just say, intense lyrics about life on the streets. And those lyrics might be coming back to haunt him now, right? Right. What exactly are the charges he's facing? Okay, so initially it was all connected to a murder-for-hire plot. The target was a rival rapper, FBG Duck. Mm. But now it's gotten much more complicated. Hey. Yeah, they've added conspiracy to the charges using interstate facilities for murder for hire. And you're not going to believe this. They say his credit card was used for it. Hold on, his own credit card. That's not very discreet, is it? Nope, not at all. And a bunch of firearm charges have been added too, including actually discharging a weapon. Wow. Bruce Rivers seemed pretty surprised by that credit card detail in the video. Surprised. Understatement of the year. He practically called it, uh, well, Exhibit A for the prosecution. Mm -hmm. and, and don't forget, Lil Dirk was arrested near Miami International Airport. Oh, right, right. The prosecution's definitely going to try and use that to paint a picture of him attempting to flee the country. Almost like they're crafting a story, not just laying out the facts. So how does this conspiracy charge fit into all this? Ah, it's a key part of their strategy. Mm. Bruce Rivers actually pointed out that conspiracy is way easier to prove than you might think. Right. Yeah, all they have to show is that an agreement existed, you know, between mm. people. And that some action, any action really, was taken toward carrying it out. They don't even have to prove the murder actually happened. Wow. So even just the planning stages could land him in deep water. What kind of sentence are we looking at here? Okay, so we're talking federal charges here. That means things are very, very serious. Potentially life in prison without parole. Bruce was pretty direct about how much harsher the federal system can be compared to state-level sentencing. Sobering, to say the least. Okay, so we've got attempted fleeing, credit card evidence, a conspiracy charge that carries a potential life sentence. But but Bruce Rivers also brought up this self-snitching element. It sounds messy. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. Basically, you got other people involved in this case, and they're pointing fingers directly at Lil Dirk, okay. saying he was the mastermind, calling the shots and paying them to participate. Trying to save themselves, right. Exactly. Hoping to get a reduced sentence by cooperating. But how much can the prosecution really trust these uh, self-proclaimed snitches? That's a great question. I mean, they're not exactly the most reliable witnesses, are they? Feels like a risky move for the prosecution. It definitely is. Yeah. But even if their stories are shaky, it adds another layer of complication to Lil Dirk's defense, yeah. you know? And let's not forget about all the digital evidence in this case. Right. Bruce emphasized how damaging those text messages, cell tower data, and oh yeah, those credit card records could be. Like a trail of digital breadcrumbs leading straight to him. Exactly. And and we haven't even gotten to the drill music aspect yet. Bruce had some really interesting things to say about that. That was fascinating. Is it even fair game to use someone's music against them in court? Doesn't that cross a line when we're talking about artistic expression? That's the debate, right? Where do we draw the line between art and reality? Especially when you're talking about lyrics that explicitly mention violence and street life. Lil Durk's music isn't a confession after all. But on the other hand, the prosecution might try to argue that it shows a pattern of behavior or a certain state of mind. And Bruce seemed conflicted about it too. He definitely criticized the way drill music seems to glorify violence, but he also acknowledged that it is a form of art. It's a slippery slope, and this case could really set a precedent for how courts view an artist's work in the future. It's not just about Lil Durk then. It could impact the entire music industry, especially genres like drill that deal with these tougher themes. Absolutely. If a rapper's lyrics can be used against them, it makes you wonder if artists might start censoring themselves. It could have a real chilling effect on creativity. It's a big conversation to have, and we'll definitely dive deeper into that in part two. But for now, let's recap what we've learned about Lil Durk's situation so far. Yeah, it's a lot to process. We've got these serious charges, including conspiracy and firearms offenses, with the prosecution seemingly trying to use Lil Durk's airport arrest, that credit card slip, 
and witness testimonies against him. And then there's this whole question of whether his drill music will be pulled into the legal battle. Right, and let's not forget that potential sentence, life without parole. Bruce definitely painted a grim picture of what that could look like. It definitely raises the stakes. And remember, all of this is based on the analysis of Bruce Rivers, who really knows his stuff. He didn't hold back, but he also seemed genuinely concerned about the choices, the choices young people are making. That resonated with me, too. It reminds us that this isn't just a legal debate. It's about real lives and the real consequences of getting caught up in a dangerous world. And those consequences are playing out in the courtroom as we speak. They certainly are. So before we move on to part two, I have a question for you. Knowing what we know now, how much do you think those self-snitches are really going to damage Lil Dirk's case? Oh, that's a good one. It really depends on how believable their stories end up being. The prosecution needs those testimonies to line up with all the other evidence. But, you know, a skilled defense lawyer could easily poke holes in their accounts. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds. Absolutely. And we'll pick up that thread and much more in the next part of our deep dive. Stay with us.